guys, this video is going to be a book review of Thief's Magic by Trudy Canavan, or as my uncle prefers to call her, Trendy Caravan. I've read quite a few of her books before, mainly the Black Magician trilogy, the Traitor Spy trilogy, and the Age of Five trilogy. In fact, there's a link to another review I've done of one of her books before in the description below. Thief's Magic is centered around two main characters whose storylines run parallel to each other, Tien Ironsmelter and Riel Lazuli. Tien is a mage student at the academy where he's studying archaeology under Professor Kilraker, a fairly inspiring professor. While Tien, Kilraker, and some other students are out on a dig, Tien finds a book, which used to be a person. It's a magical book named Vela, which absorbs all the knowledge that any holder of it has, and she was changed into a book by a great sorcerer thousands of years ago. Tien feels bound to look after Vela and keep her safe, but after the Academy finds out about her, she is to be destroyed and Tien escapes with her in protest. Meanwhile, Riel has been taught all her life that to use magic is to steal from the angels that her religion worships. Unfortunately, she has a talent for it that is becoming increasingly hard to refrain from using, especially as she's been wanting to move away from her family for a while. How will Tien keep going? How will Riel break her societal expectations? You'll have to read and find out. I quite enjoyed this book. It had a lot of really, really interesting concepts in it. Most notably, Vela, the magical book. She was a really interesting idea, and I really, really liked the execution of how she was in the book. Especially considering how magic worked in this multiverse. Yes, it's most definitely a multiverse rather than a universe. I really liked Tien's character, in particular his rather egalitarian outlook on life, which was very different from the rest of his society. I also found that his section of the plot was rather more compelling because it was generally life or death situations where he was actually risking his own life because of his beliefs. However, I did find that his character at times came across as rather wishy-washy, which I suppose was part of his character development, as all his friends were mocking him for being too nice, and he gradually grew out of that. I also found that I really liked Riel, though she was a character who could have come across as really, really irritating, or at least uninteresting. Her main character arc was most definitely about her finding society's expectations of her too restrictive, or at least in some ways. Towards the end, however, it was odd to me that when Valhan showed up and the priests were seemingly correct, basically society's restrictions were by and large justified. That didn't speak too well to me because her section of the story was all about breaking away from societal expectations. Now, I will grant that this is probably going to be plot points in the next book because she does overhear a conversation about how Valhan is kind of sketchy, so we'll see. It's maybe not as justified as I thought. I'm just interested to see what's going to happen in the next book. Now, I have two major concerns that kind of marred this book for me. The first of which was pacing, which I didn't feel was quite right. In most stories of this genre, you get a bit more world building to start with, and you sort of eased into the plot, whereas this, the plot just went straight away, because the story starts exactly with Tien finding Vela. There's no sort of preamble up to it, it's just BAM! He's found her, plot starting now. Now in some ways, finding Vela works as a way of starting the story, but in others it does not. Because in the start, you kinda need a character who doesn't know much about the world and is having to learn. That's the, the easiest way of doing this pacing. But the thing is that because of the way that Vela worked, you touch her, she knows all you know. So it doesn't really work because of that, because any sort of explanation that Tien was going to give her, she already knew. So it felt a bit forced exposition-wise in that way. My second concern is that Riel's plot lines, there was two of them. One was about her magic stuff, and the other was about her falling in love with Israe. Now, from a plot standpoint, considering what the rest of the book is about, you'd think, oh, it sh her main one should be the magic thing, and the romance with Isere should be less important. Except, she focused too much on the Isere plotline, especially with how it turned out in the end, this was definitely to the detriment of the magic plotline. Now, I don't mind a romance plotline. I quite enjoy them sometimes, especially if they're well done, but 
This one didn't work for me because the story was more about Riel with magic. She focused too much on the romance in this and it didn't work. It was clear that Riel's main plotline was meant to be to do with the magic, but the romance was shoehorned in, it felt like. I just want to contrast that with Tien and his storyline, which was rather unencumbered by romance, generally. His character was allowed to have other struggles than just who he was allowed to marry, who he was allowed to romance. Meanwhile, Riel's plotline is almost solely about her romance, and uh, it should have been about the magic. And I think that this is partially due to internalised sexism. This is not to say that Riel is a badly written character or unfeminist or, you know, but the plotline, and I feel that this is because she was female, had to be about romance. And I think that this is a weakness. Her storyline just kind of keeps too close to certain tropes that are a little bit sexist. Overall, I did enjoy this book quite a bit. It had some really good characters and some interesting concepts, but some bits of pacing and storylines just didn't work the best that they could have done. The comment question for this video is, which plots in books do you feel should have been more secondary than they were? Obviously, I feel that Riel's romance in this book is a very good example, but I'd be interested to hear your thoughts, so let me know down below. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and that you remember to like and share it and subscribe to my channel. Click on the thumbnails down below to see other videos by me, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.